actor and music director for many, many feature films, drama, documentaries, serials, and ad films. Uh, he has an extensive work in the field of performing and visual arts. He was the visualizer in RC Advertising Private, Private Limited from 1975 to 76. And then he was a graphic designer in Mumbai Durdarshan Kendra 1976 to 78. Visualizer in Ratan Batra Advertising Private Limited 1978. He is the partner of Basic Publicity Media 1978 to 1985. Partner Chorangi Theatres 1983 to 1995. Commercial Theatre Group, founder member E.M. Mandali Sadar Karuya, 1975 to 1985, and it is an experimental theatre group. He was also the creative consultant at Sitara Vision Private Limited, 1995 to 2000, where he has worked in the studios, in the software productions and marketing. And he is also the proprietor of Om Nishant Chitra from 1987 onwards. He is the proprietor of uh, Omni Audio Videos and uh, is the director of Chauras Academy, and uh, he is the president Mulun Center for uh, Performing Arts, member of PL Deshpande Maharashtra Kala Academy Film Section. We are very, very happy to have him here. And we also have three distinguished speakers with us. We have Mr. Rahul Dakanha, who had been involved in the theater for 34 years and been writing his own plays since 2003. His work includes Class of 84, Pune Highway, Me Kash and, uh, Me Kash and Chris, The Sidhus of the Upper Juhu, and I Am Not Bajirao. He, along with friends Srinas Patel and Rajit Kapoor, started their theatre company Rage. Rahul's plays have travelled to Scotland, UK, US, Germany, Holland, Belgium, South Korea and Malaysia. Rahul also heads Takana Communications that handles the famous Amul advertising. Anna Doradorno, who is a director, actress, and theater ped pedagogue. She is an Italian actress, director, and theater pedagogue. She graduated at the University of Bologna, Department of Music and Performance, and she got a degree in acting at the Academy of Dramatic Arts. She took a special degree in physical and experimental theater with uh, Santar Kangalo in the Festival Educational Program. In 2004, she founded the theatre company in Stably Vaganti, directing and acting in several internationally touring and multi-awarded performances, receiving the nomination at the Total Theatre Awards at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival 2014 for the show Made in Ilva. She holds workshops and work sessions on the performers' physical and vocal training all over the world in academies and programs such as Atelier of the Grotowski Institute of Rocklo, near Poland, Shanghai Theatre Academy, China, National School of Drama, India, the International Workshop Festival, and the BPAF, Busan International Performing Arts Festival of South Korea, the 8th uh, and 9th International Meeting of National Drama Schools in Mexico City, promoted by UNESCO ITI, the International Physical Fest of Liverpool, and the Old Vic Theatre in London, UK, the 24 Hours Festival of El Kef, Tunisia, uh, INAI, Instituto Nacional de Arte uh, Esencias, Uruguay. Furthermore, she taught theatre and gave lectures in many universities. Those worth mentioning are Bologna University, Italy, University of Kent, UK, Kyungsang University and Hosei University, South Korea, Bebes Boliai, uh, Romania, UNAM, and Universidad uh, Vera Cruzana, Mexico. Universitat de Chile in Santiago. From 2006, she is directing the International Performing Arts Project, Rags of Memory, leading work sessions for international teams of performers and artists in different countries since, 2000, countries. since 2011. She is the artistic director of the Performazioni International Workshop Festival in Bologna. And from 2013, she is directing the International Laboratory at the Physical Theatre School of Bologna. And we also have with us uh, Ms. Ina Ross. Uh, Ina Ross is an arts manager based in Berlin and Delhi. In 2011, she was appointed associate professor at the Academy of Performing Arts, Arns Busch, Berlin, where she oversaw the establishment of the Cultural Management Studies program. Since 2015, she is a guest faculty member for arts management at the National School of Drama in New Delhi. In addition to her teaching, she is writing a PhD thesis at the University of, for Performing Arts and Music, NDW, in Vienna, Austria. She frequently publishes on Indian theatre and its audience. 
Her works include Arts Management, The Indian Way, The Rangashankara Theatre in Bangalore, International Journal of Arts Management 2017, The Mobile Theatre Movement in India, a Success Story in Assam, New Theatre Quarterly, Cambridge University Press 2017, her book, How to Survive as an Artist, is a much praised as well as the most successful German publication on the subject. I invite the uh, respected chair and the distinguished speaker to kindly come up onto the stage. And I request our other friend from... Uh, Italy, whom you will uh, hear uh, in uh, the next session, Mr. Nicola Pianzola, to kindly come up onto the stage and offer flowers to the speakers and the chair. Yeah. Make me yes, <laughs> and without paying extra. <laughs> more coming. <laughs> to uh, our chair, Purushottam uh, Bede. To Mr. Rahul Dakana. <laughs> to none other than Anna. <laughs> and also to our dear Ina. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Pianzola, so much. Now I would request Professor Bedi to kindly preside over the session. Thank you. Namaskar. Hello. Namaskar. I'll be more com comfortable in Hindi, if you don't mind. Mix. Marathi also? <laughs> okay. Uh, मी सर्वांच स्वागत करतो आणि आजच्या या सेशनला आपण सुरुवात करूया मग अशी वामनने इतकं काही याच्याबद्दल सांगितलेलं आहे इतना सब कुछ उन्होंने बोल दिया है ही हॅज एक्सप्लेन द कंटेंट ऑफ दिस सेशन इन की नोट दॅट आय थिंक मेरे लिए तो ढूंढना पडेगा उसमें से अभी मैं क्या बोलू मगर uh these people have done more research on this subject so i request first to uh, yeah uh, to start your paper yeah thank you very much can we um put, yeah thank you very much is it working yes um good afternoon um Thank you very much um, to Waman Kendra. Uh, uh, and thank you very much also to my dear colleague, Shantanu Bose, uh, to inviting me today and give me the opportunity to speak among, among such distinguished colleagues. Um, and thanks also very much to Waman Kendra, who has gone, unfortunately, to Delhi uh, for this very inspiring a kick-off talk, which is very passionate, and I will refer to his introductional note quite a bit in my talk. Um, this afternoon, I'm, I'm kind of wearing two hats, actually. One as a European, that is a German theatre person, and one who has lived for the last four years here in India, and has researched and observed the Indian uh, theatre situation quite a bit. So, um, coming back to the title, Who Shrunk or Who Shrinks Our Theatre? The title, um, when I heard the title the first time, um, and I, I talked with Shantanu about it, it, it is inspired by the movie, I don't know if, if you know it, Help, I Have Shrunk My Family. Um, and the title uh, reflects the perception that Indian theatre, or theatre in, in general, is like the magically shrunk family in this film by the Dutch director Tim Olliehoek. So in, in the film, a um, very minimized family must deal with big threats, which comes with being small. 
here you see the, the, the posters. So I'm sure we will talk about it in more detail during the course of the session. Um, and I'm also sure that a lot of you here in the audiences have much more detailed insights in the Indian theater situation than I have. But let me just mention a few points which I have come across as an observer and as a researcher. And could you really, because I don't see any, anyone in the audience, can you, yeah, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. No, it's fine now, can you, yeah, fine. So let me just um, mention a few points. First, it is the lack of fund and support. Um, and a lot of my theater friends here in India speak about it. It is concerning the government as well as private donors. And then also a lack of venues. And I live in Delhi now, and in Delhi um, it is a big problem, uh, especially the shortage of playhouses, of auditorium, and more, more importantly of affordable auditoriums, especially for young theater companies who can test their ground with their audiences uh, with, a, with a very small budget. And I just brought you one image, I could have chosen many. This is um, the company Actors Factors, which is uh, actually quite established. But what you see here is a performance under um, a bamboo roof uh, in a resort in the outskirts of Delhi. It um, took me one and a half hour to reach to see that performance. and. Why is that? Because they couldn't afford an auditorium in the city itself. So that is, although it looks very romantic in this picture, as with all the lights and the uh, out uh, and the nature and all, but it it presents a very difficult situation for theatre people in big cities like in Delhi. What a lot of my Indian friends tell me it's a lack of good playwrights. Um, and also a lack of sufficient educational infrastructure for actors, directors, and also all the supporting professions in theater, like stage design, costumes, whatnot. And uh, so the NSD students can be very, very happy and very lucky that they have an institution where they get the proper education, where they, where they can learn their craft from, um, from scratch, and where they can uh, encounter during their uh, education, a lot of prestigious theatre people, so that they can learn from the best. So having all said that, let me now come to Europe and especially to Germany. As And Baban Kendra mentioned it also in his speech, uh, Germany and the Germans are known worldwide as a theatre nation. And um, it might be interesting to look at a situation where most of the grievances of Indian theatre makers have dealt with quite successfully. Um, all, the, um, all the points I mentioned before, our, especially our government, has addressed in my country. Let me just put some numbers on that. The German government pays pay per citizen 43 euros, that is 3,450 rupees for theater, for theater only. The arts is an, another budget. So um, 3,450 rupees per citizen, that includes everyone, if he or she is theater minded or not. That is a huge sum. And consequently, there is no luck of any playhouses. Um, I show you just some, I brought you some, just some examples. This is from my hometown, Berlin. This is one of the biggest, it's the Schaubühne. I think um, the Schaubühne and the Repertory Theatre Company was here in, in, in Delhi a couple of years back. But this is maybe not even the interesting part. The interesting part is a city like Paderborn, as you see here, with just 300,000 residents. This is a smaller city like Bhopal, or it's smaller than even... Nagpur, I would say. Uh, actually, a very provincial town. But this is the playhouse they have there. And that is an a image insight. So, and beside of these playhouses, they have even more smaller playhouses for younger and not that professional theatre companies. So where a new theatre company can, as I said, test the ground with their audiences and also can experience with their, um, with their new plays. And additional to that, and again, 
due to the huge funding of the government, there are also artist in residence programs, there are awards for playwrights, there are seminars for playwrights. And I just brought you one example, um, that is the German name for plays, and that is a festival which is, again, takes place uh, in a very provincial town, actually, that is the jury, and every year the best plays get rewarded with $18,500. So, um, and this is a festival which, take, which, which lasts two uh, weeks, so um, in these two weeks all the new plays get performed on different stages in the city. Uh, I just brought you that example on a very personal note because that was my very first job I had as a very young, very young theater person. I was a volunteer in this festival. Um, so, so it is not a surprise that in my Academy for Performing Arts, my last batch I taught in Berlin before I moved to, to India, that one out of 20 of my students became a successful playwright for theater. So, um, the German theater system is a professionalism-based system. What does it mean? All the people involved in theater, and I, I'm curious to hear about the Italian system, maybe that is quite similar. Everybody who is involved in theater there is uh, firstly trained, and secondly, they live off theater. There is no such thing like, I have my bread and butter job during the day, and in the evening, out of passion, I um, work in theater. Everybody has a salary or at least a honorarium there. There is no such thing like an amateur scene in my country. Um, maybe there's a, a small corners where there is on a more children-based uh, kind of hobby-like thing, but nobody would take that seriously. So all the things which might shrink the Indian theater are to a certain extent addressed here. So it's now a conclusion to that would be, okay, Germany is the theater heaven, let's all move to that, and there's no problems there. But, but in Germany, our theater faces a challenge, or to come back to the title, a shrinking situation as well, not in terms of the financial support, but in its status and cultural prestige, and most importantly, in the relationship to its audience. And pretty much what Vaman Kendra mentioned in his kickoff speech, uh, we are facing the same problem. I brought you some numbers um, as a researcher, you know, I like figures and numbers as an arts manager. Um, this is a research which was done in 2015, and it shows that the elderly and the retired people dominated, dominate now our theater audience. 66% of the theater visitors were older than 50 years, and out of this, 26 are even older than 65 years. Let me just show you that on the graphic. So this whole part of that cake belongs to the, the older, Oh, you're saying, yeah. Perfect. So again, um, this huge proportion of the audience are uh, elderly, elderly, retired people. Um, another graphic shows, <laughs> sorry, I have to work out here a bit, um, about the educational background. Again, very much what Woman Kendra said about the Indian theater. German theater is an affair for the educated people. You see here, 72% have a college degree. 17% um, have an A level. So that means here again, this whole proportion here of the theater audience are either degree holder or very well educated. The same thing, we have a very reverse gender demographic here. Uh, we, and then generally, we speak about we have two, not enough women, uh, and we have to include more women. Not here. 63% from our audiences is female. 
So to sum it up, the theater, um, theater public or the theater audience in Germany is old, is female, and very well educated. So, um, and, but this has not been always like that. Compared with the 1960s and 1970 years, there were younger people were overrepresented among theater goers compared to their share of the general population. So again, we lost. If you if you see the um, the numbers now from 2015, the same people who were in the 60s and 70s, 20 or 30 years old, are now 50, 60 or 65. So this generation just stayed with the theatre and became old. So we lost a whole generation of new people, of young people in the theatre. And that is a tremendous, um, this is a tremendous statement I have to say, especially considering the fact, which I told you, how much money the German government spends for theatre. Let me just um, um, so let me just uh, come to the question, the very simple question: Why? What brought about these changes in the status, in the success, and the popularity of theatre? And again, the easy blame goes always to the new media, to the computer games, to Netflix, to TV, to movies, and uh, to sum it up that. The new generation is a generation of couch potatoes. They don't go out, they're not interested in theater anymore. Others from a more researcher point of view argue that the blessing of the security of government funding, which has supported the artistic and experimental mindset of the theater professionals, has on the other side destroyed the audience mindness of the theater directors. Again, very much this, uh, what um, Woman Kendra mentioned about the intellectual theater. Um, theater directors um, in Germany make specially theater for other theater directors and arts critics. So the, the notion that an audience has to like it is not anymore that strong. It will come back, that's for sure, um, considering these numbers, but it has been in the last years like that. And of course, another reason um, many think that there is a lack of good management and PR in the theaters, and that is a cause of the development. But there's a much bigger context here to look at, which might can give you some uh, food for thoughts also for the Indian scenario. And let me explain this by using a literary reference. Let me take you on a little journey to Europe in the 1870s. Um, in Henry James' novel, The American, I don't know who knows it, written in the 1870s, his lead character, Christopher Newman, comes to Paris for a visit. Um, Christopher Newman is a very symbolic American name. Christopher stands for Christopher Columbus, and his second name, Newman, represents the newness of his country. So in Paris, he is introduced by Parisian high society. He meets aristocrats and, as one would say nowadays, the VIPs of the city. He goes to the Louvre Museum and he attends, attends theater performances. And what the new man, the neophyte, learns is that theater is an integral part of the European polite society in the 19th century part of a cultural and social way of life. Just to be rich and spend money would, would be considered vulgar. Theater, uh, together with the arts, stands for educated and civilized. In spite of the aesthetic revolution of modernism in the early 20th century, with writers like Bertolt Brecht, I just had this morning a conversation with my colleague from Nagpur, uh, how um, popular Bertolt Brecht is here in India, also Samuel Beckett, Anton Chekhov. The sociology of theater has remained very much what it was. A famous example is the Three Penny Opera by Brecht, which is sub-proletarian outcast characters. In his, so I brought you, uh, 
I could have chosen many of the posters. This is an, a performance from 1973 in Chicago. Um, the play itself was, um, has the premiere in 1928. Um, in his introduction, Brecht wrote about the audience he is addressing. He says, it is a play for beggars, so splendid and lavish as just a beggar can dream and at the same time as cheap as possible so that the beggar can afford the ticket. Brecht was quite disappointed when his play became a huge success in bourgeois circles. So again, as revolutionary he was on stage, as much as he introduced a new aesthetic, a new messaging, but the theater belongs to the middle class, to the educated bourgeois society. And that is what even the grand Bertolt Brecht had to learn. There were always exceptions to this, of course. Also in Berlin, Berlin the very known so-called Volksbühne, the theater of the common man. But mostly theater was an affair of the educated middle class. For them, it was a marker of their social status. And taking this uh, thought further in a more theoretical um, notion, I apologize for that. Um, so the French sociologist Pierre Bourdieu in 1979 introduced in his book Distinction, a social credit of the judgment of taste. He introduced the term of a of cultural capital. Cultural capital means a non-financial social assets that helps a person to climb the social ladder beyond his or her economic means which supports, in other words, the social mobility. And that is pretty much what, what um, I talked about, about the aristocrats in, in, in France in the late 19th century. It also applies in the 20th and 21st century, beginning for the 21st century. To be educated, to know the lead character of a play, to know what is the coolest theater director in town, it, that it helped you on, in your social status and subsequently it also helped you to climb a professional ladder or to climb a social ladder. So theater was more than just an edu edu uh, education or entertainment, it was also a social, um, a social event, a social aspect to this. So um, again, Visiting the museums, going to theaters, knowing about plays and books characterized you as an educated and accomplished person and will subsequently help you to be successful in social and in professional life. These old certainties, the unquestioned connection with a traditional world of values and habits are vanishing now in Germany. The whole concept has not totally disappeared, but it is crumbling. Young, younger people do not feel the same way anymore. They're, especially if I, I look to my sons, they're in their 20s. They don't have any advantages in their peer groups when they know uh, what a, a Lady Macbeth is about. Um, they don't, they don't, their peers don't think they're especially cool if they know that Robert Wilson is quite a good theater director. No, there's completely other kind of social capital there, which is produced in the younger generation in my country. And you always have to keep in mind, in spite of the fact that our theater system is highly financed and had a lot, has a lot of fun and a lot of reach. So the first reaction to the crisis in my country was the cry for better marketing and management. And so people like myself, arts manager, came in. And I guess that sounds very much familiar to many theater people in India, because when I travel the country, I hear that quite often we need more uh, management people in theater, we need more PR people who know how to advertise a play. So, um, and it was about helping to advertise theater to make plays known, but it did not solve the more general and more deep-seated problem the collapse of feeling of belonging and owing the theater that especially the middle class had nurtured for a long time. We cannot longer rely on old certainties. New relationships with the audience have to be built with a public that is more diverse in terms of ethnics. Think of all the migrants that have come to Europe. Gender, 
and this time the reverse gender question, educational background and social class. So the new challenge is how can a new generation with different experiences, different interests, needs and expectations develop a meaningful and sustainable relationship with the theater? How can they own it? Certainly not in the same way their bourgeois predecessors did, but as confidently and satisfyingly. And this is a very important point I would like to make before I introduce you to some of the solutions my colleagues in Germany came up. Um, as I said in the beginning, there's a lot of talk here in India, with, and this talk is value, to say um, we have a lack of funding. We, there is not enough money in our system. But um, I would like to, to show you, uh, and I would like that as a takeaway of my talk this morning or this afternoon, that money is not everything in theater. Uh, money sometimes can even uh, provoke a lack of passion. Um, and um, the, the, the feeling of belonging, this is our theater, is the most precious and most sought after feeling. And we all, if we are directors, if we are arts manager, if we are actors, kind of have to nourish this feeling because that is the soil our theater of the future is, is built on and it will grow out. So um, let me just introduce you some examples I find very interesting where my colleagues respond to that and some of them will also um, ring a bell here in this country. Some repertory companies in Berlin and Dresden, these are two big cities in Germany, have started to address this problem with a concept that might strike Indians as somewhat familiar. Although the people in charge are, might not be aware that of the Indianness of, his, of this approach. This guy started a new younger amateur scene which is connected to the playhouse, the theater of citizen, citizen theater. And here I brought you an image of the latest play, Citizen Theatre in Dresden. It is called Everything Flows, a play on the River Elbe. And the River Elbe is the local river which, goes, which flows through the city. Um, and remember what I said about the German system, theatre system, it is a professional system, so you don't have amateurs anymore. You have a very specialized scene. So they come back to the roots, they come back to that, what this country here has, the biggest asset, what I, th in my very personal opinion, thinks about theatre in India, the amateur scene. Um, so they, they, um, what they do is... Um, the common man or the common woman of all ages experiment with being an actor. They develop stories by themselves using their own biographical material. So um, they don't play the classics, they don't play classical um, plays. They develop their own plays uh, along their biographical line. What is important to them? What they would like to talk about? What would they address in their own cities? So it's a very personalized theater. And um, they have once, the month, one in, once a month, they get a, the big stage and can perform in front of a bigger audience. And the audience are all family members. So it's a very personal audience. But this is um, a nourishing of theater-minded people, and it became quite a success story as well for the big playhouses because this f uh, people now realize what is theater all about, and they also come to see the other plays. Another approach is to re-energize theater as a lifestyle for young urban people. As one of my favorite theater houses in Berlin, again, the Volksbühne here, I brought you an image, has this done for years. It was not just a playhouse, but it has also two music clubs with DJs. So if you see in the left and the right, there are different entrances to what they call the red and the green salon. And so it became a kind of one-stop solution for the youngsters who want to go out on a Friday or Saturday night, seeing a play and after having a drink at a club in the theater or having a dance. This is the Red Club, which um, you see here in full swing with, with uh, dancing going on. And this is the Green Salon, which discussion, performance, a little bit quiet atmosphere where you can have a drink after, after a play. So for all this to come off, 
we need a lot of more research about our audience. We simply do not know enough about why people come, and more importantly, why people do not come to the theater. The lifestyle aspect points to the fact that the theater experience is not poorly aesthetic, let alone intellectual in nature, very much what Vaman Kento said. It has an important social and emotional component. And if we, if we talk about audience development, we have to take this into account. Marketing and strategy, and I'm an arts manager, so um, um, I'm, I'm talking a loud, little bit contradictory to my own professional, can get, use, can get us only so far. Theater is unique in the passion and is not only represents on stage, but also mobilize in the people who watch the performances. Making them participate in theater as a living reality, very much as the Berlin and Dresden amateurs did is the most powerful tool at our disposal to go against the progress of shrinking and start expanding the space of theater again. Thank you very much. Just open. Okay. Is yours? Yeah. Yes, I do. I do. So I just on this. Just this. Yeah. This is your next. Hello. I request Mr. Rahul de Kona to read his paper. So, I have no paper. It's quite interesting that where we are, first of all, the fact that we have a World Theatre Day, everybody, happy birthday. March 27th is World Theatre Day. I don't think they've got World Bollywood Day, but they certainly have a World Theatre Day. So, right? I think we need to have, we need to clap about that, right? <clears throat> Last Thursday was World Sparrow Day, but we have, <laughs> have our own Theatre Day. Okay. So I'm going to. It's quite interesting that one heard about theatre in Germany. And the fact is, we're exactly the opposite, right? Actually, we're the same without the money, right? But what I did want to do today is very briefly just on this World Theatre Day is just basically try and understand where Engli Indian English theatre, which is where I come from, I don't have the confidence to talk about Hindi theatre or Marathi or Gujarati, but for the Indian English theatre, where are we positioned today? At what stage of the, let's say, the life cycle of the theatre? At what point in its history are we? And what are the things that... Not, I, don't have, I don't have solutions, I only have questions. So, if it's the Theatre Olympics, how do we become bigger, better, richer? So, just very briefly, I'm not showing off... I just want everyone to understand a couple of things. So, I'm a director, playwright, and producer. And like all great... Yeah, sir, if I may just tell you a small story about this. So, this decision about not acting came to me in the third standard in school where because of my incredibly slim figure, I was cast as Mahatma Gandhi. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and because of my inability to remember lines, they said, okay, the lead actor will be, will see the play from the Godse point of view. So you play Gandhi and you just keep quiet. And only at, only at that point when you get shot, you say, hey Ram, and you die. 
I thought, ठीक है यार, not not such a problem. So that moment came. Gorche comes up and he shoots, and I forgot the line. And those were early days, but there were no teleprompters and nothing in the year, so I died. I mean, that was what I should have done. Except that once I died and the and the funeral began, then I remember the line. Yeah. So I got up and said it. I had two lines. <laughs> so i decided then that i need to get away <laughs> from from acting and become a so i have been in the business of theater okay it's not a business for 34 years this briefly this is some of the work that i've done again i just i'm going to take off from this to make a certain point my career has followed the path that indian english theater has taken in the last 30 years if you take the 80s and dolly will bear me out in this pre 80s our essence was really doing foreign plays that was staged here right we didn't have our own we didn't have our own voice we pretty much followed the shakespeares and the pinters uh, of the world and did the plays as they were with our own bharat's playing bob and uh, sunita's playing susan I just wanted to give you an idea of early in my career. This is my partner Shanaz and Rajit. So we hadn't discovered, let's say, our own voice yet. We were really doing foreign plays. It's the '90s that I think many of us who were not necessarily playwrights sort of felt that maybe now wasn't quite the time to tell our own stories, but could we adapt foreign plays that were could transfer themselves to the city could they be adapted and this is one of the first ones certainly which i did call i'm not baji rao which was adapted from a, a foreign play called i'm not ravapot about old age and you will see here this is the great sudhir joshi the late sudhir joshi and this is bamman irani this was the first and why i'm talking about this is that This photograph was shot in the main theater of PL Deshpande. It was shot. Plays about two old men, and one is Maharashtrian and one is Parsi, and how they meet every day at the uh, Five Gardens in Dadar, and how they. But what is interesting about this play, and why I'm mentioning it, is that the foreign play was really about a American, Af- African American, and a. uh a jewish character who meet every day in the park the play was about old age and in the 90s when i set out to think about adapting it to india i realized that india wants its own stories that old age does not transcend countries and let's just about indian old age so for american old age is another kind of old age two old men maybe american maybe indian but they're both 70 or 80 90 years old but they have old age homes in america we're not into old age homes except now maybe which is why times have changed so i realized that the only way to be able to work this play was to be able to bring it here and so in the 90s that's what i did it is around here and this is quite late i suppose for english theater where i think we all felt that perhaps this was the time for us to find its own original voice and i would say that apart from girish karnad and a few others we didn't have a history the way that marathi theater had the alkunjwars and the alekars and then the tendulkars we didn't have a history of playwriting we didn't have a history of modern indian playwriting and english theater needed to find its voice and it's around this time that a few of us shiv subramaniya vikram kapadia myself who were directors primarily felt that perhaps now is the time now is the moment for us to perhaps attempt to write our own plays without worrying too much about perhaps the the foreign plays when they came to us were really american and english plays and therefore they required a certain level of english understanding certain of, of the, the ability to be able to speak the language well this kind of year and period in our lives allowed us to not worry about english perhaps there's a, a word bandied around called english 
which is a, a sort of loose combination of any language plus English. So it allowed us, I mean, it allowed me to cast uh, Sudhir Joshi, who's English. When I once asked him, I said, how are you doing on your lines? He said, 80%, I don't know them, but 20% confidence. That's enough for me. Yeah. <laughs> He's just one of those guys. And that allowed us because the moment he spoke an English sentence on the NCPA Tata Theatre stage, the audience was collapsed in laughter. They were just weeping and it wasn't, they were just, I think, relieved that they didn't have to deal with an English that was so complicated that they could actually, because perhaps in many ways what we tried to do was to break down that, that glass barrier that said that English unless spoken with an accent in the Queen's English, you couldn't perform a play. And I think the fact that we could break into English and break into Hindi and break into Marathi just made life easier in terms of, I'm not saying it's made us successful, but it's certainly, my business today really is not to talk about how to make us, for us how to make more money. Because at the end of the day, we will never have the kind of support, let us say, that Germany has, you know. But I'm... I'd like to say that we can never become richer because we will always be poor. And the, the bottom line is that I think we need to accept that, that after all these years, if you're going to be, in, if you're going to be, if you want to make money, then get into diamonds and whack money and leave the country. But if, <laughs> and you need to have a surname like Modi, okay? But if you're going to be in the theater, the point is that you will always have a problem because you will always never have enough funds, which is the greatness of it, which is that, sure, money isn't everything. Helps sometimes, but it isn't everything. But what it does do, in many ways, so this is a play of mine called Pune Highway. The question is, the understanding of where are we today? The fact is that there are three issues that I wanted to discuss. One is that in the 70s and 80s, when we did English theatre, the days when, let's say, Shakespeare and Pinter were being produced, your cinema was really Hindi cinema. Either it was the parallel cinema or it was Bollywood in its Amarak Parantini days, where there was no correlation between what the Hindi film audiences saw and what the English theatre audiences came to watch. What has happened subsequently, which is frightening but a challenge for us, is that with more and more English directors, ad film directors starting to make Hindi films that appeal to the English speaking audiences. And the moment our English theatre becomes more colloquial, today I feel that you are fighting an audience. It's challenging because I want the Inox audience to come and watch me. When I'm at the NCPA, I do know that a young Elphinstone kid is deciding to come and watch a play of mine, or I may trot across and watch a film at Inox. That is incredible, because never did I think that we would, and our ticket is more expensive. But still, the fact is that he's deciding which is the one, which is the one that's going to be more interesting for me, because I've got only a certain amount of money, and more importantly, my attention span is that of a fly. So, I want to go to a medium where I can WhatsApp and I can be on Facebook while I'm watching the experience. So I'm saying that's fine, that's fine by me, but I want you to, to theater, how do we, how do we, not say guarantee, but how do we work towards making the theater a medium of choice? In Germany, clearly, is no different from us, because I think the theater-going audience essentially is older. It has always been older, you go to a London theater, go to a Broadway theater, Grey hair all over, very rare that there's a, a young person in that audience. But I'm saying that perhaps, and I don't know Delhi at all, I, all I know is Bombay, which in many ways is the heart of it, because while we lack theatres, there is, if the play is good enough, you know you can do 100 shows, there's no question about that. We're starting to open up cafes, open up our galleries, open up little parks. There are venues and there's, there's a certain movement in theatre that will always stay with us. But the fact is, what are the plays that what are the plays that we are writing about? What are the issues? Why do we need to go to the West to do plays about us here when there's something happening around every street corner? And I think at the end of the day, when the young person 
is deciding and i say young person because at the end of the day this is the 65 plus person is going to go move on who is going to represent the new theater who is going to be our audience is that are going to come and right now i think our bigger danger than finance is the fact that are we relevant because unless we really get our act together we're not going to just lose money we're going to be extinct so the question that i have is are we the best that we can be are we truly cutting edge are we if we're doing physical theater is the physical theater truly cutting edge if we're doing comedies are those comedies really funny are they really representing humor today are we able to do political comedy we keep complaining that our plays may get stopped but eventually are we where is the satire where are the plays that truly talk about or even if it's about kids getting into school and college today 95% where are the plays where are the spoofs where is that are we i'm saying there's no question of complaining anymore the fact is that we need to look inwardly and ask ourselves where do we want to be three issues money marketing millennial versus digital i am saying that there's no money in the theater there never will be sponsors are dying sure they will ask the questions that if you want me to sponsor your play and i am the marketing manager of ford motors where do i exhibit my car outside the theater fine that's life put the damn car but what are we how are we marketing ourselves most of us perhaps don't understand what it means to go out there and deal with a tough marketing manager who says okay what am i going to get in return is my play is my play truly going to get in people because the point is the theater is in a unique space it is not a mass space and it's not with due respect to my friends who are in dance it's not an applied quite specific form it's the theater it's it's a verbal it's a verbal medium but what is our, what are our plays about what is this going to get in the mass the numbers because we need to catch the millennial who has a cheaper easier way on his phone he is not going to watch you but the day he says to himself so i ask the question that does are we going to always think about theater in conventional forms like on a stage nt live i think has broken the barriers completely with its a uh, shooting of of plays at the national theater it just opens it up to other audiences it's still the play but it's shot in such a way that you're able to appreciate it i'm saying are we going to do digital plays that allow the young person as a starting off point to say okay the theater is not what my mother and father go to see this is my media the good thing is millennials don't have a medium yet and are we going to catch them at a stage where we still have them So yeah that's what i wanted to say on this world theater today thank you thank you hello thank you rahul thank you thank you after ina rose from germany and uh, rahul dakuna from india i uh, you're leaving So okay. Uh, okay. I'll mail my thoughts. <laughs> uh I request Anna Dora Dorna from Italy to convey her thoughts. So um I want to say thanks for for this speech to everybody uh, before me uh, I'm the last one and I want to say uh from first things sorry for my english uh, as as the <laughs> the the kinder said uh, it's not my is not my language so but i cannot speak in hindi and uh, i cannot speak in italian if not you cannot understand me um, but 
this is very interesting for me because uh, um, it's introducing a limit, so the language. The language ca can be a limit, but in theater, if, if we use also other things, if, uh, if we use all the possibility that we have, so the possibility that have the, the actor to use the body and to express emotion, and also the possibility to use light, to use maybe visual uh, things, video and so on, we can overcome these limits and so we can expand our theater. So for me, the theater itself, theater as a concept, as a location, as a stage and so on, building, is a limit also. So theater shrinks my theaters. Because uh, nowadays, I think that it's very important to extend the theater in every place and uh, to expand the theater in uh, every situation. So um, I'm a director and uh, actress of my theater company in Stabili Vaganti from Italy. And, uh, but I think that I prefer to be an artist, to be considered as an artist. Why? Because when we, sp when we speak about theater, everybody's thinking, what is theater? Theater is the building in which there is an actor, and this actor is speaking maybe a text. And this, these things is the, mm, the common uh, idea of theater. Also, if there were many sp experimentation, many things absent, happened in the last uh, uh, century and so on, but this is the idea of the theater. So, an actor that is speaking a text. In my theater, there is a text. Text is, is important also, but there are many other things. So, um, there are action, that uh, is the main things of, uh, of my theater, so physical action, and also a very strong impact, visual impact. So we try to use every kind of expression to expand also uh, our theater, but also the audience, the possibility to communicate with the audience, with different kind of audience. And I think that I this is very important because um, as the example of before, um, in theater, in, in the different country, every country has a specific kind of audience. And it's difficult to go out, to involve a different kind of audience. But if we are thinking um, not only as theater person, but as an artist, we can involve more kind of audience and we can use different approach to involve young people, to involve old people, to involve everybody in a different ways. Um, this was very important for us as a company because in Italy, for example, the system is very different from Germany. So we don't have money, a lot of money, but this is not the important thing. So I think that, for example, the buildings are very old, maybe, maybe very beautiful building because the Italian theater is very, I don't know, uh, there are theater very ancient and for opera, for example. But this kind of theater cannot be used by people as us. So as uh, independent company, young, not so, not so young company, but we cannot enter in a theater that is, that is, for example, a theater for opera. So this is uh, 
I think is a limit for us as, a, as artists because we cannot use all the possibility that a building such as this can give to us. But for us was also an, an impulse to go in other direction and to work in very different mm, fields or in very different situations in our country but also all over the world. So um, we decided to, to work um, not only to create pro production um, but to create projects. So in this project, basically we are two people in, in our company, me and Nicola. Uh, so, me as a director and um, actress, so artist, and Nicola as a, uh, actor and, uh, and performer and many, many other things. <laughs> but the possibility of the project is to involve other artists, to create a collaboration, and also to involve audience in a different ways. Um, can be professional or not, um, that can join some part of our project in a different level. So creating different kind of uh, um, perception also about our project, depending of the, uh, for example, of the study that people have and so on, the level of professionali of professionality and other things. So these projects. Um, basically involved many aspects of the artistic form and also other kind of disciplines as anthropo anthropology, for example, or um, music and so on. One of, the p of this project that uh, we create um, 12 years ago, is the project Rags of Memory. So the title also have a specific meaning because rags for us is, are some um, kinds of uh, um, creation that we produce, but these creation are not only performance or show, can be everything, can be for example, um, an, artistic an artistic video, can be uh, a poetry, can be um, a photograph and so on. So in this project we involve uh, many artists coming from all these disciplines and we create these fragments, these rags of memory because the main themes of the project is the memory. So we investigate this theme um, with different approach uh, the approach of the actor, so the individual action also, and reaction of the human body on, um, that react on this topic, the memory topic, the historical aspect of the memory, and also the anthropological aspect. But this, in the, uh, always in the performing arts forms. So um, thanks to this project, we, um, we, go, we went all over the world, and uh, we create a sort of uh, um, session, work session, uh, with other artists coming from all, all over the world. And um, in this session, we research on the traditional also element becoming from um, traditional performing arts, and we try to um, to create something new, to, um, to combine this form in uh, a new language. And uh, thanks to, to this um, session, we were not only in theater, but in different uh, places. We, we were also in a village here in India, in a theater village that I think is very interesting uh, this theater village are very interesting place to work in the middle of the forest, very different for us. Um, but we were also in Korea, in Mexico, and so on. So this, for us, uh, was very important to expand our theater. And uh, um, we, we 
in, in the frame of this uh, project, we create, uh, of course, not only performance and show, but m different kinds of uh, um, artistic forms. So I want to show a video, it's an artistic video that is part of this project, and uh, to have an idea uh, of the mm, process of work, because I think that this um, fragment, these um, rags are independent because can have a value in, in as at an artistic value alone, like this, or can be used and combined also in a performance uh, or in a different uh, uh, situation as installation and so on. Uh, lights? Lights uh, down? Seems not connect. No. minute just a minute sorry but the there was a the setting was different for the previous speech okay
So th this video can have an artistic value in itself, um, but um, what? <laughs> okay. um, but of course, can also um, be part of uh, other kind of work. So uh, sp especially, it's part of a trilogy, a video trilogy that we can. We, um, we present also as installation in some vi um, festival of, vi of visual arts and museum, but also these three videos are part of, of the performance, the rituals, that is the performance that represent all uh, the project. And uh, um, in, in this, um, to, be, to, to create this video, of course, we collaborate with video makers and with a photographer. So a part of the work that there is uh, inside is a work of uh, our photographer that she realizes uh, the pictures, the, the red pictures that we uh, combine and we uh, put it inside the video. And of course, the work of the performers. So uh, my work that I'm doing the action and when I'm doing live uh, in a performance, I'm, I'm doing in the performance uh, and I'm interacting with the video and um, the action of Nicola that was captured by the photographer. So this can be an example of, um, of the work, working with uh, different sources, with different disciplines to combine together and to create something that can be used in a different ways and so can be shown also uh, in a different context and uh, um, uh, reach different people, also different kind of audience. Uh, so can somebody can be attracted for the visual aspect of the of the work, but also f um, f from other aspect when uh, the video is uh, inside the performance, and uh, so for us it's very important this this aspect to um, don't think only to perform or to realize something for the theater, the theater building, also because as I said before, we cannot have access to um, some building that we have in our country, as, um, for example, the young uh, German company can, can do it. And, um, and so we expand um, the, the places in which we can work. Uh, so uh, we work, for example, in, in, in Chile, in the very small village in Patagonia, and we bring this project there. Uh, but, for example, in the pedagogical aspect, so teaching and uh, doing workshop, so also with people that is not professional because maybe they have some, um, some mm, tradition that they, can, they want to uh, explore and communicate, uh, so this can be a key for us to work together with people that is not professional. And um, I want to, um, as last things, uh, uh, to show a video uh, on, on the pedagogical aspect. So um, it's a workshop that we did in, uh, in China. But the interesting things is that the workshop uh, was, the result of the workshop was presented in uh, in, um, in a gallery, in an art gallery, in an art museum, a modern art museum. Um, so um, the work was changing, of course, and um, was presented as, as, um, as uh, an artistic performance happening in the, um, in the museum. Uh, and so people were free to come to see and to understand what, what happened in that moment.
that theater can be everywhere and can be can expand a lot the possibility um, and expand the space as before uh, Mr. Kendra say try to uh, found other places and to uh, found other kind of audience and involve uh, how much is possible uh, the other arts uh, and uh, all kind of people. Thank you. Thank you very much. Who shrunk my theater? Yeah, we shall work upon Tiganchi Mata Iklit. त्यामध्ये सुबे वामन जी ने जो कहा उसमें ज्यादा मुझे पॉइंट्स सब्जेक्ट को पकड़ के निकले ऐसा मुझे लगा और अभी जो जो बातें हुई वट एवर यू एक्सप्रेस फ्रॉम जर्मनी एंड इटली थिएटर फ्रॉम देयर कंट्रीज so after watching germany's uh, this uh, anna uh, ina's uh, visual presentation of theater mujhe to aisa laga ki hamare liye itna bhi kafi tha agar is tarah se theaters hamare yahan hote to we would have enjoy more than now what we are enjoying our theater तो इनके श्रिंकिंग के प्रॉब्लम्स कुछ अलग है हमारे कुछ अलग है ऐसा मुझे भी लगा मगर एक कॉमन प्रॉब्लम ये है कि ऑडियंस का एज ग्रुप इज मिडिल क्लास एंड ओल्ड एज यंगस्टर्स तो कहीं पे भी आते नहीं है थिएटर देखने ऐसा पूरा मुझे कंक्लूजन लगा जो राहुल ने भी वही कहा 
और इन राहुल्स स्पीच मुझे ऐसा लगे कि वो प्ले नहीं है ये इनका दुख है मगर मैं अगर वो होते तो मैं सजेस्ट करता कि इस दुख को लेके मत बैठो ये तो प्रॉब्लम सॉल्व होने वाला है प्ले राइट्स शेक्सपियर अपना लिख के चले गए तेंडुलकर साहब ने लिखा एलकुंचवार एल आड़ेकर अपना अपना एक्सप्रेशन लिख के देह एक्सप्रेस्ड आप किसके लिए रुके हो आप सिर्फ डायरेक्शन करोगे कोई भी लिखने की कोशिश नहीं करेगा इंग्लिश थिएटर के लिए यू हैव कॉपी राइटर्स यू हैव एडवर्टाइजिंग में मैक्सिमम आप लोग काम करते हैं तो नाटक लिखने के लिए क्यों चुप बैठे हो आप क्यों अलग किसी और का नाटक आप बिठाना चाहते हो ओनली डायरेक्शन पर्पज और प्रोडक्शन पर्पज ये मुझे ऐसा लगा उनके स्पीच में कि डोंट वेट फॉर एक्सप्रेशन मैं खुद ये मानता हूं कि श्रिंकिंग जो है ये तो एस्टेब्लिशमेंट के बाद लगता है कि आवर थिएटर इज श्रिंक श्रिंक जब हमें पहले नाटक व्हेन वी स्टार्ट आवर ड्रामा एक्टिविटीज इन आवर यंग एज वॉट एवर एज दैट टाइम वी डोंट वी डोंट थिंक ऑफ श्रिंकिंग द थिएटर एंड एवरीथिंग वी गो ऑन डूइंग वी सर्च वी एक्सप्रेस वी डू एक्सप्रेशन एक्सपेरिमेंट्स एंड We have no need of anything in those days. But after establishing yourself, your own uh, thoughts and whatever, फिर हमको लगता है कि हम हमें कुछ कम पड़ रहा है So ये stage भी आ सकती है या आई हुई है ऐसा मुझे लगा बाकी तो सब है जैसे जर्मनी में इन्होंने कहा कि every uh, citizen government spends थ्री थाउजेंड एंड फिफ्टी फाइव हंड्रेड डॉलर्स तो हमारे यहाँ भी है महाराष्ट्र गवर्नमेंट भी अनुदान देती है व्यावसायिक नाटकों को भरे भी ए बी सी डी हो पंद्रह लाख से पच्चीस लाख तक मीन्स कैलकुलेट करें तो कम से कम एक रुपया तो आता है ऑडियंस को भले हो ना हजारों में हो मगर मुझे ये प्रॉब्लम ऐसा लग रहा है कि गवर्नमेंट का जो नजरिया है थिएटर को देखने या एंटरटेनमेंट को देखने को दैट इज लास्ट प्रेफरेंस क्योंकि उनके सामने बड़े बड़े जो बाकी के प्रॉब्लम्स है वो वहां पे फर्स्ट प्रेफरेंस दिया जाता है और कल्चरल को लास्ट प्रेफरेंस दिया जाता है तो ये तो होना ही है हमारे थिएटर्स की कंडीशन हमें थिएटर हमारा अपना थिएटर खड़ा करने को श्रंग करती है आड़े आती है जो आज एक जमाना था छबील दास में हम लोग कुछ एक्सपेरिमेंट लेवल पे नाटक करते थे वो जो साइज थी छबील दास के रंग मंच की वो आज आधी हो गई है उससे भी कम आ, आ, स्पेस में आज आविष्कार जैसी संस्था नाटक करती है कहीं पे भी जगह मिले वहां पे नाटक हो रहा है मगर स्पेसिफिकली थिएटर के लिए डिजाइंड फॉर एक्सपेरिमेंटल थिएटर या छोटा नाटक या कुछ अपना एक्सप्रेशन जैसे थिएटर में सिर्फ प्रोसिनियम नहीं है एरिना भी है एम्फी थिएटर है मगर है कहाँ वो आज बड़े बड़े सोसाइटी में एमपी थिएटर दिखाते हैं बिल्डर लोग यहाँ पे एमपी थिएटर है मगर क्या कर रहे हैं वहां पे वाई डोंट वी गो देयर एंड परफॉर्म आवर प्लेस तो वैसे सॉल्यूशन भी है और नहीं भी देखा जाए तो बहुत कठिनाइयां है हमारा थिएटर करने में और देखा जाए तो कुछ भी नहीं है अगर मैं अपना थिएटर में जिद से करना चाहता हूं तो मेरे पास कोई डिफिकल्टी है नहीं मैंने खुद ऐसा थिएटर किया है मैंने किसी मैं किसी राइटर के लिए रुका नहीं मैं ना मैं तेंडुलकर साहब के लिए रुका ना मैं आड़े कर मुझे जो चाहा वो मैंने खुद लिखा मैंने अपना थिएटर किया तो मैं ऐसा मानता ही नहीं हूं कि कोई श्रिंकिंग मुझे कोई आज मैं दस साल के बाद एक नाटक करूंगा क्योंकि मैं फिल्में करता था मैं और कुछ करता था आज मुझे लगा नाटक करूंगा तो मेरा नाटक मेरे लिए मेरे जैसा मैं करूंगा जो मेरा मेरा ऑडियंस वो देखने आएगा इसका मुझे विश्वास है सो so, बाकी के जो प्रॉब्लम्स है वो हम प्रॉब्लम करके देखेंगे तो है नहीं तो कुछ नहीं है मार्केटिंग ये वो सब दीज आर ऑल सबॉर्डिनेट थिंग्स फॉर मी जब थिएटर करना है तो थिएटर जैसे हमने किया था बिगिनिंग में हमने तो ये सोचा ही नहीं कि हम हम कहाँ करेंगे ये प्ले अलवारा डाकू जैसा प्ले कहाँ करेंगे कॉम्पिटिशन में कर रहे हैं मगर उसके बाद कहाँ करेंगे सोचा नहीं मगर हुए पचास शो किया हम लोगों ने तो आज हम लोग एस्टेब्लिश है इसलिए सोचते कि अगर मैं ये करना चाहता हूं तो मैं कहा करूंगा मुझे ये प्रॉब्लम है फंडिंग का प्रॉब्लम है ये तो 
ये अगर सोचेंगे तो आपका थिएटर श्रिंक होने वाला ही है अगर ये सब ओवरकम करोगे तो कुछ श्रिंकिंग है नहीं कुछ नहीं है जैसे हमारे यहाँ बड़े बड़े प्लेस हुए हैं बड़े बड़े एक्सपेरिमेंट्स हुए हैं कमर्शियल थिएटर में हुए हैं एक्सपेरिमेंटल थिएटर में समांतर दोनों जगह हुए हैं और वो सक्सेसफुली हुए लोग आके आके देखते हैं भीड़ करते हैं और देखते हैं कहीं पर भी लगा हुआ जिसकी मौत आज मराठी थिएटर के आज की जो अवस्था है वो दस पंद्रह साल से जो एजुकेशन हुआ थिएटर में मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि उसकी वजह से है जिन्होंने डिवोटेडली कुछ संस्थाएं चलाई हमारे यहाँ अभी मौजूद है दो तीन चार लोग ये सोनटक के सर है शफात खान है वामन के अंदर खुद है जिन्होंने थिएटर भी किया और एजुकेशन लेवल पे भी काम किया आज मुझे वो सब दिखाई दे रहा है कि कुछ ऐसी पीढ़ी हमारे यहाँ मौजूद है कि जो इम्प्लीमेंट कर रही है सिखाया हुआ सब आज मराठी थिएटर में देव बाबड़ी सर का नाटक किंवा दोन स्पेशल सर का नाटक ह्या लोकांमध्ये कोण मोहन जोशी आहे का त्याच्यामध्ये नाना पाटेकर आहे कोण आहे सगळे आजची मुलं आहेत का तेंडुलकरांचं नाटक आहे कोणाचं नाटक आहे ते कालच्या काल परवा कुठेतरी वर्कशॉपमध्ये लेखन म्हणून काम केलेलं लोकांचं आहे त्यांनी हे बघितलं नाही की आपण हे नाटक शिवाजी मंदिरला होईलच का नाही का कुठे होईल केलं सो नो श्रिंकिंग नथिंग श्रिंक आहे तो ऑडियन्स आज आता पण आपण श्रिंक झालेल्या ऑडियन्स समोरच बोलतोय मी कुठे आहेत पण पोचलंच नाही ना काही लोकांपर्यंत तर येणार कसे लोक मग त्याच्यावर प्रॉब्लेम आहे तर सोल्युशन आहे मग सोल्युशन जर स्ट्रॉंगली जर बघणार नसू आपण तर मग श्रिंकिंग आहे मग असं फंडिंगचं आहे सगळंच आहे पण करायला घेतलं तर कशाचाच काही प्रॉब्लेम नाही आहे असं मला वाटतं आणि थँक्यू आज आपल्याला मग मला जर्मनी आणि इटालियन आपल्या इन कम्पॅरिझन ऑफ मराठी इंडियन थिएटर वी डोंट फाइंड एनी प्रॉब्लेम इन युअर थिएटर देर मस्ट बी सम प्रॉब्लेम अकॉर्डिंग टू यू बट ॲज अ थिएटर पर्सन आय हॅव नॉट सीन एनी मेजर प्रॉब्लेम इन धीस मे बी यू यू मस्ट बी हॅविंग द प्रॉब्लेम्स व्हॉट एव्हर जसे बॅले इटालियन बॅले ही इज अ ट्रेडिशन अँड दॅट इज अ प्रॉब्लेम टू थिएटर मुवमेंट टू की टू ब्रेक दॅट ट्रेडिशन इट इज व्हेरी डिफिकल्ट हमारे यहाँ संगीत नाटक की ट्रेडिशन ब्रेक करना नहीं चाहते थे हमारे जो बुजुर्ग थे मगर वो इतना हाई टाइम हुआ था संगीत नाटक का कि उसमें से ड्रामा वॉज आउट एंड ओनली म्यूजिकल रिसाइटल्स वेर देअर सो वहाँ पे सोशल नाटक आ गया वहाँ पे हमारे बुजुर्ग नाटककारों ने जो एक क्रांति की और वो ब्रेक हुआ वैसे ही इटली में हो सकता है लाइक ॲना अँड ॲस ए आप इफ यू पीपल गो ऑन डूईंग युअर काइंड ऑफ थिएटर द ट्रेडिशन मस्ट बी चेंज मे बी चेंज वॉट वॉट आय हॅव ग्रास्प इन युअर प्रोजेक्ट सो ह्या एकेकाळी श्रीमंतांसाठीच नाटक होतं कारण त्याच्यामध्ये संगीत बैठकीची गाणी हे सगळं होतं नंतर नंतर ते हळूहळू मध्यम वर्गीयांचं झालं आजही ते मध्यम वर्गीयांचंच झालेलं आहे त्याच्यात सुद्धा हायर मिडल क्लास च्या लोकांचं ते नाटक झालेलं आहे आणि त्याच्यात सुद्धा आता ते कमी झालं याच्यासाठी की फॅसिलिटीज कमी झाल्या मी माझी गाडी कुठे पार्क करू नाटक संपल्यावर मी जेवू कुठे खाऊ कुठे मल्टिप्लेक्स आता नाटकांचं मल्टिप्लेक्स यायची गरज झालेलं जसं सिनेमाचं आहे एका मल्टिप्लेक्समध्ये सहा थिएटर्स आहेत आणि सहाच्या सहामध्ये काल परवाच्या सिनेमे लागत आहेत तसं नाटकांचं मल्टिप्लेक्स झालं पाहिजे थिएटरचं एका मल्टिप्लेक्स मध्ये पाच छोटे छोटे थिएटर्स आहेत आणि पाच वेगवेगळ्या पद्धतीची नाटकं इथे मला अविष्कारचं बघायला मिळतं इकडे मला आळेकरांचं बघायला मिळतं इकडे मला औरंगाबादचं नाटक बघायला मिळतं असं जर इंटरनॅशनल फेस्टिवल तर वर्षातून एकदा येणार पण ते पण का व्हायला हरकत नाही गव्हर्नमेंटने तो पण विचार करायला पाहिजे जेव्हा मल्टिप्लेक्स सिनेमांचं यायचं होतं त्याच्या पहिल्या मिटिंगला मी हजर होतो महाराष्ट्र गव्हर्नमेंटच्या की असं असं एक मल्टिप्लेक्स येणार तिथे अशी थिएटर्स असणार तिथे असं पार्किंग असणार तिथे हॉटेल असणार सगळं असणार त्यावेळेला सगळ्यांनी अरे बापरे असं इम्पॉसिबल आहे कारण आपल्याला तो पर्यंत सिंगल स्क्रीनची सवय कुठेतरी जाऊन एका थिएटरला तीनचा बाराचा आणि नऊचा शो बघायची ती सवय आता मल्टिप्लेक्सने आता मोडली आणि ते जुनं झालं तसं आज थिएटरचा विचार अशा पद्धतीने मग थिएटर म्हणजे व्हेन्यूज व्हेन्यूजचा नव्याने विचार करायला पाहिजे तेव्हा आपलं इथलं थिएटर प्रत्येक डायरेक्टरला जसं हवं तसं होईल असं माझं मत आहे 
कारण आज आपण विचार करतो की ठराविक थिएटरसाठी ठराविक इकॉनॉमी एवढी एवढी पाच दिवस जाहिरात पंधरा पाच दिवस ग्रँड रिहर्सल आणि हे टिपिकल सगळं झालेलं आहे ते मोडलं पाहिजे ते मोडल्यानंतर आपण आपल्याला मोडायला समोर काय आहे काहीच नाही पाच मोजकी थिएटर त्यांची पण मेकअप रूमची अवस्था गंभीर आहे डोंबिवली कल्याण सगळीकडे थिएटर झाली पूर्वी काय एकच साहित्य संघ शिवाजी मंदिर डोंबिवलीला राहणार ना कुठेही राहा आता प्रत्येकाच्या घराजवळ एक एक थिएटर आहे आणि मग तुझा ठाण्याला प्रयोग असेल तर मी बोरवलीचा राहतो मी तिकडे कशाला येऊ मी बोरवलीला राहतो मी हे एरिया वाईज झाल्यामुळे ऑडियन्स परत शिरिंग झाला तर असं काहीतरी फॅसिलिटीज एक एका थिएटर बरोबर किंवा त्या व्हेन्यू बरोबर जर आज गरज आहे फॅसिलिटीजची फॅमिलीजना नाटक पण बघायला आवडेल काहीतरी लाईव्ह परफॉर्मन्स बघायला आवडेल जेव्हा त्याच्याबरोबर ह्या सगळ्या फॅसिलिटीज येतील हा एक म्हणजे जरा ॲडव्हान्स विचार आहे थिएटर्स लवर्सचा हा विचार नाही आहे आम्हाला जर जेन्युअनली मला आज नाटक एखादे स्ट्रॉंग विषयावर करायचं असेल मी या सगळ्या गोष्टींचा विचारच नाही करणार मी नाटक करेन आणि कुठे रस्त्यावर पण दाखवेन ते मला जर तो विचार पोचवायचा असेल तर पण एक ॲडव्हान्स थिएटर किंवा ग्लोबल लेवलवर थिएटरचा विचार करायचा झाला तर अशा काही फॅसिलिटीज पाहिजेत ज्या आता आपण जर्मनी आणि यांच्या ह्याच्यामध्ये बघितल्या ते थिएटर बघून मला एकदम खूप असं अर्थात तिकडे ह्या सगळ्या गोष्टी आहेत अवेलेबल ज्यांनी पाहिला नाहीत आणि बघितलं नाही त्यांना असं असं वाटतं पण कम्पॅरिझन टू आपल्या थिएटर्समध्ये आणि त्यांच्या हे बघितल्यानंतर आपली परिस्थिती विदारक आहे असं मला वाटतं आणि ही जी निराशा आहे ही केवळ ह्या डिजिटल किंवा टेलिव्हिजन किंवा आताच्या सिनेमाच्या कंटेंट्स सगळे वेगवेगळे हे आल्यामुळे त्याच्या ॲडव्हान्समुळे नाटकाकडे थोडंच दुर्लक्ष झाल्यासारखं वाटतंय पण ह्या सगळ्या गोष्टींवर कॉन्शियसली विचार केला तर मला असं वाटतं ही श्रिंकिंग नष्ट होईल आणि परत आपण त्या दिशेने कंटेंट वाईज चाललेलोच आहोत परफॉर्मन्स वाईज किंवा गर्दी खेचण्याच्या दृष्टीने ह्या गोष्टींचा विचार होईल असं मला वाटतं आणि थँक्स टू ऑल थ्री थिएटर गोवास थिएटर ॲक्टिव्हिटिस्ट अँड ऑन वे ऑफ ऑफ थिएटर ऑलिम्पिक्स मी सर्वांचे आभार मानतो उपस्थित त्यांचे आणि माझे दोन शब्द संपवतो धन्यवाद Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we started a little late, so the session went a little ahead, and I'm sure you all are angry. There is a, a little packet of lunch for uh, all the listeners here, and we invite you to kindly be on the, uh, at the foyer uh, to have the lunch. Uh, this is, I think, 2.25 um, to 2.30. So at 3.15, we gather uh, for the next session. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>